Hey YouTube gun people. Uh, I want to show you something um, on my uh, Colt Franken gun 1911. I love this firearm. It's great. It shoots great. A uh, little bit of an issue. I told you it had the uh, old style Colette bushing. This is what these things look like. Let's zoom in. Uh, so the idea is this has, uh, you can see one's broken. That's the whole point of this. You can see the way this is actually designed, Colt designed these. So here's your barrel. This is um, uh, thinned out here to keep the weight down so it's not overweight in a pistol competition. But the way this um, typically would have fit on here, and so it, I'm not going to force it on now, um, but it would sit on there. And what those fingers would do is they're slightly compressed and they would mate up with the end of the barrel um, very efficiently. So Colt did that a while ago. So here's a Colt Colet bushing. And here's the problems with the Colet bushing. I told you I was going to shoot the piss out of this thing. And uh, I have been doing so. And um, one of the fingers broke off. You can actually see here's uh, two pieces of it. It broke off. So these Colette bushings suck, really. Uh, if you get a gun, if you happen to buy a used firearm that has them, just change them out. And that's what that video is about. This this video is about today, and how to actually go about doing that. What you need to do is uh, get a micrometer and get some measurements uh, off this guy and uh, your barrel. So uh, let's uh, zoom out. Let me get the micrometer and. Um, I'll, I'll show you what what I mean. Okay, so, um, you know, I, I actually cheated a little bit because I already bought one, and, and um, but I'll show you how to figure this out. The easiest way to do this is to try to get a drop-in uh, bushing. And the way you can kind of figure this out is you got to get um, from from your old bushing some measurements. The first measurement you got to get is uh, the inner diameter. And so if you take your micrometer and you uh, take an inner diameter yeah. Just keep going around. You got to keep going around until you find the widest place. So here we go. Uh, this is measuring out. Uh, can you see that? 0 0.581 or 0 0.58 inner diameter, right? So that that's a measurement. Write that measurement down. Uh, great camera work as usual. I, I am known for that. And then you got to get an outer diameter. Uh, so basically, you know, again with a micrometer, measure around the outer diameter. And you want to measure back a little bit um, from the face, and get your get your measurement. That's uh, a bit of a. No, it's try, trying to uh, here we go my micrometer doesn't really fit that well in there okay so I'm getting around if you keep spinning it around you gotta get the, the, the widest measurement you follow me so rotate this thing, thing in your micrometer and you're gonna get look at look it's fluctuating, right? You want the the widest the widest point. So the widest point comes out to about 0.697 or so. So what the easiest thing to do at that point is call up the nice people at Brownells, they're a huge uh, part supplier for 1911s and other pistols, and tell them what your measurements are. Um, you could all you should also get a measurement at the end of your barrel. Okay, they're going to want to know that as well, all right? Get that measurement as well, and they'll they'll uh, 
hook you up with a barrel. So in this case, here's what you wind up. I, I picked an Ed Brown. There's other ones. Um, I just they make good parts. So there's my uh, inner diameter, outer diameter, solid barrel bushing, and it's a drop in and it's blued, right? Simple as that. Now, if you're if you're not, um, you got to be willing to take a possible hit and that it might not fit, and you're going to have to go visit your your gunsmith anyway. But uh, in this case, it, it fits perfectly. The other thing is to know the manufacturer. This slide is actually a Colt slide. Uh, so when you tell them it's, it's going to be, you want a part for a Colt Mark IV Series 80 slide, uh, it's the same. This, this 1911 happens to be a 9mm. That doesn't matter because the barrels are the same. If you look at a 1911 barrel, um, except for bull barrels, uh, not counting a bull barrel, these are bushing barrels. Um, the, the, the outer diameter here is the same whether it's 45 or, or 9 millimeter. What's different is the thickness of the wall, right? So if this was just a 45 barrel, it'd be straight all the way across here. It wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be uh, skinny down. And um, it, that just increases the weight. That's why you get rid of that on a 9 millimeter. Are you following me so far? I hope you are. All right, so um, it's as simple as can be. I'm going to take you through how to put it together. Now, oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is um, the guide. While I was at it, the guide rod is a, that this thing came with is sort of a two-piece guide rod. And the spring has been shot a lot, so I figured I'd change the spring out as well. Um, again, you can. Uh, take some measurements, although it's not really needed. This also has a shock buffer in it. I'm not a fan of it. It's wedged between two plates. They tend to wear out at the, and break at a bad time. This is between two plates, so it's um, somewhat better than normal. This happens to be, I know from the previous owner of this farm, a 13-pound spring. Okay, And it's a th much thinner guide rod than, norm than it's normally on a 1911 because it's for a 9mm. Um, just to keep weight down again. doesn't really matter in all intents and purposes. So what I did is, uh, while I was at it, I ordered a, um, a full-length guide rod from Brownells as well. And the guide rod is uh, just a really stainless steel, nice Wilson Combat. So this is now a Colt Wilson Combat Brown Franken gun. This fucking thing doesn't know what it's doing anymore. Uh, and it comes with the um, with the bushing too. All right. So you can just order a product like this from Brownells and change that out too, if so, if it's necessary. Uh, the other part of this equation is that if you're going to do this, you might as well replace your springs. So you can get a Wolf spring kit from Brownells too. There's the info. Uh, you gotta pick, you know, you can consult the people in Brownells or if you know what you're doing, uh, you just go ahead and get it. Uh, this is a 13 pound wolf spring and I already changed this out. This is a new firing pin spring. If you're gonna change out the uh, the uh, recoil spring, change out your firing pin spring at the same time. They wear out. And you can keep the old ones as spares. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them, right? Your gun was shooting just fine, so it should, you know, if something went bad at a match or something, you can, you can uh, deal with it. Now, new spring, old spring. The number of coils is the same. There's 31 coils in each one. Okay, 13 pound springs. But um, look at the difference in length. This, this gun's been shot a lot, as I said. Um, so, you know, I put like 700 rounds through it myself already, and I know the previous shooter is a really outstanding and avid shooter, so I'm sure he's put a lot more than that through it. So it's time to change that baby out, too. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do now is um, get these parts lubed up um, uh, so they're ready to be put together, and then I'm going to get back to you and show you how to sling it all together and some of the issues you might, be, you might have. All right, so the gun's all lubed. Let's put it back together. Let's um, put the barrel in there. Uh, and we'll put in the guide rod. I do grease the guide rod. I don't think that's a bad idea, actually. Grease it. It's actually a really good idea. 
Um, all right, let's put our new bushing in. Yeah. Now, this new bushing is actually fit really well. What you might have to do is push up on that barrel a little bit, just wiggle it into place, and, um, and turn it in the right position. Okay? I really hope I'm getting this shit on camera. Uh, yeah, that's better. Guide rod goes in. No fat, no fuss, no mess. New spring goes in. Wow. It's like a brand new gun. Alright, from that, from there, make sure your lug is forward. Like so. Up and down. Can you see that? This is not really a reassembly video. It's just showing you that you can replace um, your bushing. It's no big deal on a 1911. If you can take some basic measurements and make a few phone calls, you'll be all set. Um, here we are. But let's just put the slide back on. If it's it should be on camera. If it's not on camera, too friggin' bad. go. Now, uh, what you're going to have is some issues that, that you're going to have to deal with until breaking. This bushing is going to mate up pretty tightly, which is what you want. You want a tight fit. Because don't listen to any of this stuff about the slide wiggle being... Uh, that's my daughter telling me that the Bruins are on. I'll tell you what, I live in a household of Bruins fans and that uh, uh, my wife and daughters are more insane Bruins fans than I am. It's incredible. Anyway, all that matters for 1911 accuracy besides the quality of the barrel is in fact um, the, uh, the bushing to barrel fit. The slide wiggle doesn't mean anything. A full-length guide rod doesn't mean anything for accuracy either. All it does is keep the spring from binding. Okay, It won't bind on itself. Those are facts. Facts, not facts. Facts. Anybody tells you different, they're full of doo-doo. Now, this, is, this part will also probably take some wiggling. Keep your face out of there. Push it down with your finger and then just get a bushing wrench because they really cut the shit out of your hand. They really do. If you're not careful. Put it in place and um, there we go. What's up? Um, let's do some system, let's do some function tests on this. First of all, make sure it racks all the way back, okay? This gun's wicked greasy right now, so let me just wipe it off for a second. Excuse me. Greasy's good. I think it is. Just wipe off the excess. So let's just go through here and... Yep. Yeah. Now it's going to be a little different at first. We'll I'll take this out and shoot it to make sure it's reliable. But that's um, pretty nice. Um, all right, now let's do some uh, safety checks. We just reassembled the firearm. Grip safety is off. Sorry, grip safety not engaged. Um, uh, safety is uh, off. Pull the trigger, nothing should happen. Engage the grip safety. Gun fires. Cock it. And engage the main safety. Uh, even with everything depressed, shouldn't fire. Take the safety off. Press finger off the trigger. Press the muzzle back. Go back about a quarter of an inch or so. Maybe that. Gun should not fire. Let it come back into battery. Finger off the trigger, fires. Do that again. Where we uh, push back, right? Finger off the trigger. Now put the finger on the trigger, engage the grip safety, main safety's off. Let's slide 
forward. This is just checking your disconnector so you don't have a full auto on your hands. All right. Nothing. You should hear a reset and a fire. Okay. Looking good. That's all there is to it. Take your other parts and just. Oh yeah, baby. Come to daddy. Um, you are. You're good to go. Good to go. That's it. Uh, the other thing I'm going to talk about is how to change this fiber optic site. We'll come back and get that with you.